and my great grandmother passed away mysteriously without a trace in the year 1912. So the other day I was going through our family albums, right? Looking back at old photos, reminiscing on better times. And I got to a photo of my great grandmother, but I looked in the corner of the photo and it was dated in 1962, 50 years after her death. This can't be possible. I had to find out what was going on. What is up guys, it's your boy Ming. Welcome to today's video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I do a bunch of story time videos, so if you enjoyed this one, you can binge watch the rest during quarantine. Link in the description below, I guarantee you won't regret it. By the time this video is out, I may or may not have hit 20,000 subscribers, but regardless if I hit it or not, I just wanna take this time to thank you guys so much. I was stuck on 11,000 subscribers for the longest time, for nine months, and I never gave up. I would stay up every night till it was very late, and at one point, point I got super sick because of the lack of sleep. I would spend 12 hours on a single video and it would get barely any views. But you know what? I never gave up. For anyone who's out there who's watching this video, if you have a dream, if you're passionate about something, I want you to know you are capable of achieving anything. Your future is in your own hands. If you work hard, anything is possible. The only limits are the limits you set for yourself. So join me on this journey and we'll chase our dreams together. Also, if you're interested in getting featured on my Instagram, Drop a comment down below. I'll be posting my favorite comments on my Instagram story. So be sure to follow me and I'll see you guys there. Anyways, let's begin with today's story time. History was always something I found super fascinating. In order to understand why things are the way they are today, it all dates back to what happened in the past, the doings of our ancestors. So for me personally, I've always enjoyed learning about our family history, especially because things were so different back then. I mean, I'm sure some of you guys can relate. How your parents would tell you that back then, times were tough. Like the world was a completely different place. We would never really experience the struggles they've experienced. All we can do now is just listen and imagine how it was. My mama would always tell me back then she had no shoes. She had to walk miles to get firewood. There were days where she had little to no food at all. In this day and age, I feel like a lot of us take for granted the little things in life. The joys that my parents never had when they were young. Like even something as small as air conditioning. Something that we don't really think about. These small things don't really cross our mind. But back then, when it's boiling hot, there's no AC. You melt like an ice cream sundae on a Thursday afternoon or even just having a microwave that can heat up your food in just minutes it is insane nowadays every kid has an iPad you know what my mama had she had a shovel to farm crops the life we take for granted kids nowadays don't even know that's why I feel like it's so important to understand your family history when you truly understand you are a hundred times more grateful for everything in life this is exactly why I work so hard I mean I've been quarantined before quarantine was even a thing if you ask my siblings at home they will tell you I stay up till 6 a.m. every night, eight days a week. If that's what it takes, then so be it. I have a dream worth more than just sleep. I know my parents don't expect me to owe them anything, but a huge part of my dream and my drive to succeed is to one day be able to give back to them. And I know with unshakable certainty that we're gonna make it. And I say we because we're all in this together. Me, you, everybody. So I was talking to my mama the other day and I was asking her about my great grandma because it seems to me I didn't know anything about her. I personally grew up with my mom's mom, so my grandma. But at the time, I was so young. I was herp derp. Herp derp? I didn't really have that hunger for knowledge like I do now. I didn't have that curious mind yet. So I wasn't able to have the opportunity to ask my grandma how her mother was. So I asked my mama instead. But the thing is, my mama didn't really know much about her either. She was a complete mystery in the family line. All she told me was that she passed away mysteriously in the year of 1912 without a trace. And I thought that was very, very unusual. So the other day, I was just looking through our family albums, right? Just looking through old photos, reminiscing on better times before the pandemic. Now the world is in chaos. So I was flipping through the album, and I got to a photo of my great-grandma. But I looked in the corner of the photo, and it was dated in 1962, 50 years after her death. How can this be? I had to find out. My grand grandma passed away mysteriously in the year of 1912. So the other day I was pretending to look through our family albums. I was just flipping through the photos and I stumbled upon a picture of my grand grandma. I looked in the corner of the photo and it was dated in 1962, 50 years after her death. How is this possible? 
I knew I had to do some investigating. I first had to calculate how old my grand grandma was before she died, so I took out my calculator from the dryer and entered the year my grand grandma was born, 1882, multiplied by the number of sheep I count before I sleep, divided by the number of fish in the Pacific Ocean, and got 30 years of age. My great grandma went on vacation when she was 30. Coincidence? I think not. So I looked at major events in 1912 on Yahoo and found this. Is it possible that my grand-grandma was on the Titanic? So I went on Google and looked up where the Titanic sank and searched it up on Bing Maps. And it was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, so I rented a local water horse from the farmer's market and traveled 487 days without lembas bread or orange juice. I got to the location of the shipwreck to look for any clues that could explain the disappearance of my grand-grandma. Suddenly, I noticed something in the corner of my eyeballs. I make haste towards the shore of the ocean. I open it, and it looks like there's a message inside. I opened the package and took out the piece of paper inside. To my surprise, the message was encoded in a bunch of hieroglyphics. How was I supposed to decipher an ancient language? A language that had been lost in the realms of time. Should I contact Greg again? He might be my last hope. He didn't pick up. He must be busy filming Ip Man 5. I'm on my own this time. I had to decode this message. It might be the only clue left to explain everything. So I decided to take a nap because when in doubt, take a nap and you might wake up with the answer. When I woke up, I dreamt about chickens. But also, I realized my great grandma had a nephew. But how can I get in contact with someone whom I've never met? This just seemed to be another dead end. I got up as fast as I sat down and decided to scan the fingerprints to match with every single backlog of our ancestral Ming dynasty. After about 47 days, it finally finished loading because my internet sucks. It matched the handwriting with my grand-grandma's. It's a match. If my grand-grandma was still alive, then who died on the Titanic in 1912? Thank you, sister. I will never forget what you did for me. Turns out, my great-grandma had a twin sister. On April 15th, 1912, Captain Smith of the Titanic allowed lifeboats to leave the sinking ship partially filled, and the final boat only had one spot left. Her twin sister forced my great-grandma to go on while she stayed behind. At 2.20 a.m., the unsinkable Titanic sank, meaning the one that passed away that day wasn't my great-grandma, but her sister. But why did I not know about this? My mother must have told me. I must be missing something. I realized my great-grandma had a nephew. Who died on the Titanic in 1912? And the final boat only had one spot left. I don't want to go.
at 2.20 a.m., the unsinkable Titanic sank. Alright, so this story was cool and all, but the other day I found out My great granddad twice removed was an Olympic athlete back in 1896. He kept all his medals in his locked shoebox. He told me if I could somehow open it, everything inside would be mine. So the first Olympic Games had 280 athletes. My great granddad twice removed was one of them. He took home gold and ultimate frisbee and brought honor to our family name. So I checked on Google and saw the medal was prophesized to be worth over 2 million dollars today. But how was I supposed to open this box? 